Ladies and gentlemen, welcome this evening to the uh, Loyola Academy Virtual College Fair. My name is Jeff. I'll be your facilitator tonight. We're welcoming uh, six institutions this hour. And uh, just before we get started, as a reminder to all the attendees, your cameras are turned off and your microphones are muted, but you can ask questions to the Q&A box below of any of the institutions at any time, even if they haven't presented yet. If they don't get a chance to get back to you before the end of the evening, they will respond via email later as they will get a transcript of this. Uh, this evening, we're hearing from, as I mentioned, six institutions, Kansas State University, University of Missouri, North Carolina A&T State University, University of Cincinnati, University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and Michigan Technical University. Without further ado, I will turn it over to Kansas State University. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with y'all. Hi, everyone. My name is Paloma. I'm an admissions representative with Kansas State University. I graduated from K-State in May of 2019 with my degree in athletic training and a minor in kinesiology. Loved it so much. I'm still here and a regional representative in the Chicago area. But if you're not familiar with K-State, we are a large tier one um, nationally ranked um, public research university. We're located in the heart of the country in Manhattan, Kansas, also known as Little Apple and it's one of the consistently top ranked college towns in the nation. Um, and it, we do have a direct flight from Chicago to Manhattan if you're interested, um, but let's learn a little bit more about it. Here are some quick fast facts. So we are a division one school. We are in the big 12 conference. We have about 22,000 students um, and 18,000 of those are gonna be our undergrad population. We have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio, which means that not only will you get to know your professors, but more importantly, they'll get to know you. And some other fast facts. So the Princeton Review voted on by students. We have the number one happiest students in the nation. Also why our town's nickname is Manhappiness. Um, and we're number two for students who love their college, number one for highest starting salary in the state of Kansas, and number three for best health services. And then we also have a 97% job placement or education continuation rate. And I'll dive a little bit deeper later on about what that means and how we support our students. But yeah, some of my favorite things to do when I was in Manhattan was get to go to the coffee shops in our entertainment district of Aggieville, get to go hiking out in the Kanza, or getting to go on float trips uh, at one of our nearby lakes. But I hope one day you guys get to visit and can go to one of our football games at Bill Snyder Family Stadium or go to a basketball, basketball game at Brandon Lynch Coliseum. But let's dive into it. So academic colleges, for those of you that are in the college shirt still not knowing what you wanna study, we have nine different academic colleges. They range from um, agriculture, architecture, planning and design, arts and sciences, business, education, engineering, health and human sciences. And then we have a separate campus, separate campus known as our Polytechnic Campus or Technology and Aviation for students who wanna be a pilot. And then we also have a vet med program. Um, you can, that, with that included, we have over 250 different majors and over 50 different minors. So you can really customize your degree um, to reach your end goal, what, whether that means um, pursuing something in the health field or going into getting your master's or whatnot, what that means after for you. Um, we also have a program called Open Options for students that are not sure what they want to do yet. Um, you can come to K-State and not have to declare a major, so you can kind of take some classes, take some career aptitude tests, and really figure out what you want to do. And then on the other side of things, being a K-Stater, what does life look like as a Wildcat? So we have a lot of students doing undergraduate research. Um, a lot of our professors are already conducting research, so you can connect with them or they can connect you to someone else to find what is going to be your best fit. We also have over 500 different clubs and organizations. Some of those are gonna be more based on academics. So maybe a pre-PA club, pre-dentistry club, things like that, or some fun ones like Harry Potter club, skydiving club, Star Wars club, and then some leadership clubs as well. And then we also have Greek life and education abroad for students that are interested in traveling abroad, hopefully post COVID, um, but with over 85 different countries. Um, if you're interested in applying to K-State, our admissions requirements are to achieve one of the following. So you can have a 3.25 high school GPA, we'll take weighted or unweighted, um, a 21 ACT or 1060 SAT, you just take one of them. And then for any juniors in the room, um, our application for fall 2022 will open this June. Um, and if we have everything we need, so you'll be self-reporting um, and we are test optional for admissions, you should receive an admissions decision within two weeks. Um, we are also on the Common App as well. That might take a little bit longer just um, with the processing, 
Um, but yeah, go ahead and apply as soon as you can in the month of June. And then for uh, scholarship opportunities, if you apply before the priority date, we have our general university scholarships. This year we had test optional scholarships. Of course, I encourage students to fill out the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. And then we have another opportunity where students can fill out the K-State Scholarship Network, which is where students can receive scholarships from their academic colleges. The very nice thing about this one is students are able to apply every year. So your scholarship, scholarship opportunities don't just start um, end your first year at K-State. Um, for our students in Illinois, we have the Midwest Student Exchange Program. So if you have a 3.25 GPA and a 22 ACT, you can be eligible to pay 150% of, of uh, in-state tuition. And then for any alumna, so if you have a parent or grandparent that attended a K-State, we have our Heritage Scholarship, um, and you just have to have a 3.0 GPA, and that's 12,000 renewable, as long as you apply before our party dates. So very happy to have met with you all today. I hope you learned a little bit something, but we do have visits in person and virtually. So if you wanna check out campus, go ahead and head to our visit um, email. And I am again, the regional representative. You can reach me by email at kc9 at k-state.edu, or you can schedule one on me at kelly.com slash me AR Pluma. Thanks for your time and go cats. Thank you so much. So we're gonna leave the big 12 and gonna to go to the SEC now and the University of Missouri. All right, thank you guys so much. I'm Stephanie Duff. I'm one of the three Chicago regional representatives for the University of Missouri. I am the Loyola Academy rep, but I also have Maria Chukas here with me today. She'll be answering any questions in the chat. So feel free to put those in there for her. So Mizzou or the University of Missouri is located in Columbia, Missouri. It is about a six hour drive from the Chicagoland area or a quick 35 minute flight from O'Hare. So you can fly directly into Columbia. We are halfway in between St. Louis and Kansas City, so about an hour and a half to St. Louis, hour and a half to Kansas City. We are consistently ranked one of America's best college towns, but we are also recently ranked a top 25 city to live in overall. Something I loved about Columbia and Mizzou when I was a student there, campus itself is a registered botanic garden. It is unbelievably beautiful. And it's only a square mile. So if you walk from one side all the way to the other into downtown Columbia, that's only about a 10 to 15 minute walk. So no matter which dorm you're in, you can easily access any part of campus by walking as well as the 200 different shops and restaurants in downtown Columbia, attend one of the awesome festivals. In fact, we are home to one of the country's largest documentary film festivals, 20 different live music venues, and then lots of awesome parks, hiking trails, biking trails, running trails, there's really something for everyone in Columbia. It's an incredibly vibrant, safe college town. Mizzou has 30,000 students from every county in Missouri, all 50 states in the United States, and more than 120 countries. So we have Tigers that come to campus from all over. We're a very unique university. We are one of only six public universities in the entire country to have a medical school, a vet school, and a law school all on one campus. Additionally, we are also the land grant university for the state, as well as the tier one research university and a member of the AAU. The AAU is your top tier 63. Um, there are 63 members on the North American continent. And then being a member of the AAU has a lot of stringent regulations that come along with it. Like our professors spend equal amounts of time doing research and teaching you. So you're learning from the best of the best in all of their different fields and industries. Our admissions application opens on August 1st. You can apply via the Common App or our own institutional application. There's a $55 application fee, and then we need your official high school transcript sent directly from your high school. We also need a test score sent directly from the testing agency. So either ACT or the College Board for SAT, we will accept super scores. For this current senior class, we had a test optional pathway that required a resume and a personal statement in place of the test score. And we will be extending that pilot program for our current junior class. So if you're junior, there will be a test optional pathway for admission. The requirements may change a bit from what our current seniors have. So stay up to date on our website where you can also see the sliding scale of test score to core GPA. We have over 300 degree programs on our campus in 13 different schools and colleges as well as a Discover program for undeclared majors. We have over 600 clubs and organizations, over 400 study abroad programs, and 50 different club and rec sports associated with our legendary rec, rinks, rec 
Center ranked as one of the best in the country by Sports Illustrated. So if you want to stay active and you want to play a sport on our campus, absolutely, there's 50 different club and rec sports. Community service is also a really big deal to us and our students. We have the largest alternative break program in the entire country where our students spend one of their breaks all over the country and all over the world doing community service. We are a member of the SEC, the Southeastern Conference, and we have 20 NCAA Division I teams. We are known for our hands-on learning. We call it the Missouri Method. This term was originally coined by our world-renowned School of Journalism. To give you an example of what this actually means, this hands-on learning, we are the only university in the entire country to own and operate a network affiliate news station. So our broadcast students get to manage an NBC station broadcast to all of Missouri as part of their classwork, as part of their curriculum. Another example is education students. We get you in the classroom as early as sophomore year to make sure that you like the age group and the classroom setting. Business, you're pitching ideas to C-suite members of Fortune 500 companies. We have a massive hospital system on campus for our nursing students and our health profession students. Every single degree program has that hands-on learning, which has turned, uh, which has given us a 93.4% successful career outcomes rate, meaning within six months of graduation, our students have jobs, are in grad school or in the military. We have three different types of scholarships. There are competitive and departmental scholarships which have separate applications. Those are typically due December 1st. We have automatic scholarships, which you are automatically considered for whenever you apply. And for those, we will accept new information, including GPAs and test scores all the way through summer after senior year. And then of course, our famous residency program to get in-state tuition after your first year. So five simple steps, live in Missouri for 12 months. We count the time you're in the dorm. So you just need to stay for a summer, make $2,000 with a part-time job, register to vote in Missouri, get a Missouri driver's license, and your parents cannot claim you on their taxes for that one year. You do those five steps one time and you're set for in-state tuition the rest of your time at Mizzou. We are open for in-person campus visits. So you're welcome to register to come visit Mizzou and Columbia but we also have a myriad of different virtual options as well. You can see those and sign up for those at visit.missouri.edu. Thank you so much. My name is Stephanie Duff. Again, I'm one of the three Chicago regional representatives. So you can see my contact information here. We also have Maria here with us today monitoring the chat. So thank you so much to Maria and we look forward to working with you. Go Tigers. Thanks, Stephanie, appreciate that. Again, a reminder to those in attendance, you can ask questions all along to the universities through the Q&A box below. Uh, so from the SEC, we're now going to go over to North Carolina A&T State University and the MEAC Conference. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Nakia Bradford. I serve as the Senior Assistant Director of Freshman Admissions here at North Carolina A&T State University. Thank you so much for carving time out of your evening to learn additional information about our wonderful institutions. Um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my slides. Um, I bring you greetings on behalf of our Chancellor, Harold L. Martin Sr., who is actually the first Aggie alum to serve within this position. So just know once you become an Aggie, you are are under leadership that definitely cares about your well-being and your input during your time here in Aggieland. We're going to begin with some history about a &T. We were founded in March 9th, 1891 as a land-grant university. We are a proud land-grant university. We shout that from the mountaintops, literally established so we can instruct our students in the discipline such as agriculture. And that's actually what puts the A within a &T, horticulture, English, as well as mathematics. Fun fact about us, we actually started on Shaw University's campus, which is another fellow HBCU in the nation. For those of you who may not know, an HBCU stands for a historically black college or a university. However, we welcome all um, ethnicities, all backgrounds, okay? There are about 101 HBCUs in the nation, um, and we're definitely regarded as the number one public university. Um, so we're definitely proud about this accolade. So 
after us receiving funding to create our own institution, um, we began to receive some accolades. Our students started doing wonderful works. As you can see, we are considered a STEM focused institution. So that stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, for those of you who may not know, however, we are not STEM exclusive and we'll come through our academic disciplines within the next slide. You may be wondering what is a doctoral research institution? Um, our Carnegie Research Classification is considered R2. Simply put, we are considered a high research activity institution. So if you're looking to attain that research experience, think of a &T. As you can see, we have over $60 million coming within research funding. Just to name a few items in which our Aggies are conducting research in, it would include artificial intelligence, recreating new building materials to construct um, new buildings with. And we recently received an $8 million grant from NASA in which we are creating um, vehicles that will take flight or hover um, to mitigate traffic congestion here um, on land. We earned a few um, accolades in 2019. As you can tell, we are the most affordable campus in the state of North Carolina, and we are the largest HBCU in the nation. So if I can get some Aggie pride down in the chat below, that'll be amazing. Just over 12,700 students, um, encompassing our graduate students as well. So if you're looking to attain that master's, that doctoral degree, you could definitely you definitely can do that here at ANT. Um, as mentioned earlier, we are located in Greensboro, North Carolina which is considered the third largest city in the state. We are considered the, um, the gateway city um, to the Piedmont Triad. So we're not too far if you heard, heard of Winston-Salem, um, High Point. And if you would like to switch your vibe up and um, get a bigger city field, we are considered a quaint city with its own character, its own charm. We're only an hour away um, from Charlotte as well as Raleigh, North Carolina, which is considered our capital. We have seven different academic areas here at ANT. Um, just to comb through them, just so you have um, a better idea in which we have to offer, we have more than just agriculture and engineering, right? Um, we definitely offer animal science, where our students are known to um, go to graduate school or earn, excuse me, or um, attain entry level positions within the field. So they're known to go to Purdue, known to continue um, their doctor, excuse me, their studies in animal science um, at Tuskegee, as they have um, a doctoral program in animal science. Um, so you definitely can continue your studies there. Um, College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, our students are able to study criminal justice, English, professional theater. Um, I'm going to just comb through. Business, we are the number one producer in African Americans becoming um, accountants. Uh, College of Education, we all offer speech, elementary, and special education. Of course, we're, num we're the number one producer in the, um, in the United States, um, and excuse me, the number one producer in African Americans attaining their Bachelor of Science in um, the United States. So shout out to our engineering program. We definitely have mechanical engineering, um, industrial systems engineering, bioengineering. So the list goes on and on. And even automotive engineering and um, Rolls Royce and BMW is known to hire our students. Nursing, um, physics, meteorology, you name it, we got it. I'm going to keep it going. Um, we have wonderful support resources here. So we have what's called the Center of Academic Excellence, whether you're in need of tutoring services or advisement, helping to create those schedules. Our students are known to cr um, travel across the world over to 200 countries. Um, places would include Morocco, Japan, China, Canada, J uh, J uh, Jamaica, the list goes on and on. And our students are known to have um, high early career uh, earning salaries within the state and the most competitive within the UNC school system. Um, we are known to pair our students with Fortune 500 companies such as IMB, Procter & Gamble, NASA, um, General Electric. We are a Division I institution currently competing in the MEAC Conference, which stands for the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. So if I have any athletes out here, just know we are a Division I institution and you're able to attain athletic scholarships. We do offer football, track and field, cross country, bowling, tennis, golf, softball, baseball, basketball, you name it. Um, we have 140 organizations, whether you're interested in Greek life, um, leadership positions. We have a, a world-renowned band, the Blue and Gold Marching Machine. And if you would like to become a 
dancer, majorette. We have our beautiful golden delights. Campus Traditions, we're known to have the greatest homecoming on earth. So go ahead and visit us. Um, I see I'm meeting my time. Um, we look for our students to meet our minimum course requirements. Feel free to take a snapshot of this screen um, as you are at risk of being denied if you do not take these courses. So go ahead and take us a picture of this. If you have any questions, I will go ahead and answer them at the end. Again, my name is Nakia Bradford um, and I am your admissions rep. So I will be dropping my email information down below should you have any additional questions. Thank you so much for your time. And as always, Aggie Pride. Thanks so much, appreciate that. Uh, again, a reminder to students, please feel free to interact with the representatives. Next up, we have the University of Cincinnati. Hi everyone, my name is Jen Sloan from University of Cincinnati. As you have heard from a few other representatives today, I am also based in the Chicagoland area and work with students from all over Illinois, including Loyola Academy. So I'm excited to be with you today. Um, University of Cincinnati is a large public research university. We have over 47,000 students and just over 27,000 undergraduates on our main campus. We are located in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is about a five hour drive from the Chicago area or a one hour flight. We're about 25 minutes from the airport and two miles from downtown Cincinnati. What you will notice about our campus, if you're looking at this photo, um, is that you can't drive through our campus. You see a lot of walkways, but a lot, a lot of roadways. So what's a little unique about it is that you can walk pretty much anywhere on campus in about 15 minutes or less. It creates a very traditional on-campus experience right in the middle of a very urban campus environment, which a lot of students really enjoy getting kind of the best of both worlds. Um, one thing I'd like to point out with our large school, we get a lot of questions about how big are my classes gonna be? Am I gonna spend the first two years in large lecture halls? And the short answer to that is no. What you can see listed here is just under 4% of our classes have over 100 students or more. Over 82% have 50 students or less. So could you have a large lecture hall as a part of your experience? It's possible, but the vast majority of your classes are going to be a much, much more manageable size. Um, some of our um, required co-op co programs you'll see listed on the side over here and our optional co-op programs. One of the most important things to know about University of Cincinnati is 100% of our students participate in experience-based learning. For some of them, that is going to be a co-op or a cooperative, cooperative educational experience, which is a paid working experience that's a part of your time as a student. Um, it's different than an internship in that it's always full-time and always paid and was actually founded at University of Cincinnati. So it's a huge part of our story. Um, other ways that you might have experience-based learning could include clinicals, student teaching, artistic performance, research. We are a research one institution, so we do hundreds of millions of dollars of research each year. Um, we do have over 350 different majors and programs. So there are a lot of different ways um, to get involved in the academics that you see. And just so you have an idea, I'll give you a quick run through of the colleges. Um, the College of Engineering and Applied Science, College of Allied Health Science, College Conservatory of Music, College of Nursing, College of Medicine, which does have two undergraduate programs, our College of Arts and Sciences, Linder College of Business, College of Design, Architecture, Art and Planning, and our College of Education, Criminal Justice, and Human Services. So as you can tell, there is a lot to study. Some of what we would consider our more unique programs are listed below on the slide. And as I mentioned, um, with 100% participation in experience-based learning, that is going to be, that's going to mean that you are going to have a professional learning experience related to your major outside of the classroom. Um, if you're not overly familiar with Cincinnati, one really great thing to know about us is that we have over, um, we have the largest number of Fortune 500 companies of anywhere per capita of anywhere in the country. A lot of people don't realize that about us. So it's a really great opportunity for our students. Um, and then a few other things about the city. Um, we are definitely a very arts focused city. We do have um, several professional sports teams and we're a festival city. So it's a really fun place. Um, back on campus, we have over 500 different student 
um, activities. So many, many, many different ways to get involved. We are division one for athletics and um, we have over 30 club sports and of course, intramurals. We are a very residential campus. So um, about 83% of our freshmen live on our main campus. You are only required to live on campus as a freshman. You're welcome to do so after that. Many students will choose to either continue living on campus or move into the neighborhood right around the university. And we do have 16 different residence halls that include traditional suite style and apartment living. We are a common app school. That is the only way to apply to the University of Cincinnati. We do have an application fee. We require an official transcript one letter of recommendation, which I assure you one is enough. We have been test optional this year. We will continue to be test optional next year. I would stay tuned for um, a little bit more information late spring or early summer on if there will be any changes to that. This year we required a test score from nursing, early childhood education, and our university honors program, uh, but we will largely continue to be very test optional next year as well. You can see all of our scholarships listed here. What's really great to know about our scholarship process is that all you have to do to be considered is meet our early action deadline of December 1st. So there's not a separate application as long as all required materials are received on or before. Um, and hopefully if we're having this conversation in March, it will be before December 1st. We will automatically review your your application for any scholarships for which you may be eligible. Um, the National Outreach Award is one that I would tell you to stay um, tuned for. That is specific to our students from out of state, including Illinois. There are some good changes that will be coming to that this year. So I would expect by fall that we'll have a little bit more criteria available for you. Um, and as you can see, these are the, um, the programs that we put priority on December 1st because some of our programs will close after that date. So you wanna be sure that you get all of your information in on time to ensure that you have um, review for the program of your choice as well as for any scholarship dollars. Um, and if you have any further questions, certainly feel free to let me know. Um, but hopefully this gave you a good start into the University of Cincinnati and I really thank you for your time. Thanks so much, Jen, appreciate that very much. Next up, we have the University of Nebraska Lincoln. Thank you, Jeff. Um, give me one sec. Everyone can see my screen, correct? Okay. Uh, yep. Sorry there, Jeff. All right. Uh, thanks everyone for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Adam Britton. I'm an assistant director of admissions based recently around Chicago. Um, I'm a, a Omaha native, but uh, also a 2015 alum of our College of Business. And the University of Nebraska Lincoln is in actually uh, the smallest total uh, enrollment in the Big Ten. So we're actually the, the smallest university uh, in terms of our, our student body. Um, but we're also in one of the largest college towns in uh, the, the country. And so our students are really uniquely positioned to have a lot of opportunities within their education, but also in their career. And then they're able to get connected with their uh, student advisors, with other students, with their professors, uh, and really be able to get a full college experience. We're also the land grant flagship university for the state of Nebraska. So we place a very strong emphasis on research, on education, and really provide students with some unique opportunities to step out of their comfort zone overall. We're located right in the heart of downtown Lincoln, which is about an eight hour drive from Chicago or an hour and 20 minute flight. And uh, Lincoln is also a transportation hub. And so you can see we're right in the center of the country. So it's really easy to get to and from Lincoln and Omaha, uh, depending on where you're looking to go. Omaha is about 45 minutes from Lincoln. It's the largest city in the state of Nebraska. And a lot of our students find internship and job opportunities in Omaha, but obviously certainly uh, within Lincoln as well. We have about 150 total majors uh, across 10 colleges. So our students are able to pursue a variety of different opportunities uh, and degrees, but then also continue on to graduate in doctoral work through our University of Nebraska Medical Center. We have a law program and also a veterinary school as well. So students are, again, really uniquely positioned to uh, gain a lot of really good experience, but then also be able to share those experiences and that education within Nebraska or also continue to other avenues uh, post-graduation. We have about 500 student organizations that students can participate on campus. Being an NCAA Division I athletic program, uh, college athletics is a huge part of being a student at Nebraska and just the overall passion for the university 
and for the residents of Nebraska really have everybody behind our students. We have about $317 million in research expenditures last year for fiscal year 2019, which is our largest ever. And we continue to really change the world in a variety of different ways, uh, certainly throughout this COVID pandemic as well. You'll see a great image of campus here. Uh, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to walk from one end to the other. So it's extremely easy to navigate campus. We also allow cars for all of our students. Uh, so you can bring a car to campus and find adequate parking or you can still get throughout campus and throughout the city via our transportation uh, buses and shuttles uh, that will take you between a few of our other campuses, uh, but then also be able to connect you with the grocery store or uh, the mall. Uh, but Lincoln has everything that our students need. Uh, about 300,000 people live in Lincoln. You're able to have all the entertainment opportunities that you'll need, uh, plenty of restaurants and shops and uh, opportunities to have fun outside of campus. But then again, you'll be able to really enjoy the outdoors as we're a really strong, active-based uh, campus community. Uh, campus is right next uh, to our downtown area. So you're able to, to hang out there, uh, participate in our 130 miles of bike trails throughout the city and really enjoy the outdoors. We have several different Fortune 200 and Fortune 500 companies based throughout Nebraska. And we have really strong relationships with our students uh, and these employers to help you with internship opportunities and connect you with that full-time career once you graduate from Nebraska. For the fall 21 term, our students were able to take advantage of a test optional admission process and we were test optional for scholarships. So we're able to automatically award all of our students scholarship opportunities and admission just solely based off of their core courses and uh, their GPA. All of our admissions requirements are on that website, uh, but we look for two pieces. We want to look at your GPA, and then we also want to see the core courses that you've taken throughout high school. And we're rolling admissions, so we were able to award admission between August 1st and May 1st of your senior year, and we, and we automatically review you for those admission scholarships as well. We're available on the Common App in our uh, Coalition App in our own institutional application, so three different avenues that students can apply to Nebraska. Uh, but we also will consider your test scores, um, but they're not going to be the, the sole piece that we're going to look at to award admission and scholarships. Since we award merit scholarships automatically, uh, May 1st is our main deadline for that. Uh, again, since we're rolling admission, we really try and limit the amount of stress that our students uh, encounter throughout the college process. We want to guide you throughout that process as well. So you can go to admissions.unl.edu slash estimate type in your GPA and or your test scores and be able to see right away before you even apply what kind of scholarship that you can be uh, reviewed for. And then those scholarships are four-year awards as well. We're open for on-campus visits and we have several different narrated videos of campus uh, from our current students and our staff, and then uh, numerous opportunities to connect with us virtually uh, connect with myself or my colleague Aaron Glisson uh, for a next step session and be able to just talk about everything that you're uh, concerned about or just wanting to know a little more about uh, throughout the process. One of my favorite images of campus is within our Pinnacle Bank Arena. It's where our men's and women's basketball teams play. It's where we host graduation in our spring career fair every year. Uh, this is in our student section and it really just shows the culture and passion at Nebraska and why we nickname it the Sea of Red. So we're really excited to have you guys on campus at some point. Feel free to reach out to me via email or phone call. And uh, thank you guys for spending a little bit of your time with us tonight. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate that. Our final institution presenting tonight is Michigan Technical University. Hi there. I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, my name is Tara Brewer with Michigan Technological University. I am also, like many of the other panelists tonight, based in the Chicagoland area, just out of Fox Lake, Illinois, actually, and have the honor to work with the Loyola families. And if you ever have questions in a normal year, I'd encourage us to meet for like coffee or hot chocolate and kind of chat about everything. Um, but thanks for sharing your time with us tonight. 
So Michigan Tech, a little bit about us. We are a public university. We're about 7,000 students total with about 5,600 undergrads. The student to teacher ratio at Michigan Tech is about 13 to one and over 90% of our courses are taught by professor with an average class size of about 25. So even though we are a public university and about 7,000 students, the majority of our students are um, degree seeking that first four year and um, the class sizes are kept pretty small. So we have a smaller feel. The professors will know your name if you're in class. They'll also know what kind of research or employer might be doing work that you'd be interested in. They're really gonna know who you are. The average student at Michigan Tech has about a 3.78 GPA that ranges, so don't let that intimidate you at all. Um, and we do award scholarship based off your application. So we'll get a little bit into that as well. We do host one of the largest career fairs in the country on our campus. Uh, when I talk about where we're located in a little bit here, you'll understand why that's a big deal. Um, and for the last eight years, we've been ranked in the top 15 for highest starting salaries out of all the public universities in the country. So even Tesla and Google and Apple and Amazon and countries from all over the world or companies from all over the world will come to meet you guys on our campus. This last year, the average starting salary was just over 66,000. We're really well known for research. I'm, no, I'm noticing that that's a trend tonight, which is pretty amazing. Michigan Tech had over 126,000 hours of paid undergraduate research that happened on campus this last year. We also have other ways to get involved hands-on outside of the classroom, whether it's study abroad, um, working with a design team, or something that is unique to us would be our enterprise program. This is um, almost like a club on campus that is structured like a company. So it's very um, indicti like indicative of what you'll experience in the workforce. So you'll be working with business majors who will handle like the marketing and the finance end of your project, um, computer scientists, engineers, just across the board. And um, I guess I should have mentioned earlier, we are a STEM heavy university. About 75% of our students will come for one of our STEM majors, although we have over a hundred to choose from just about 60% of our students go for our College of Engineering. But this um, cross uh, collaborative program gives you a chance to work with companies like, for example, through our aerospace enterprise team, NASA and the Air Force, and the students are working on designing nanosatellites. One is currently in space and is being run from campus and is doing surveillance for the military. So you get some really exciting hands-on work that way. To apply to Michigan Tech, it's totally free. There is no essay, no letter of recommendation needed. The whole process will take about 15 minutes. And then once you've applied, we wait for your transcript to come in and then we're able to like on a rolling basis, award, um, give you a decision and then also award you scholarship. Our automatically awarded scholarships range from 10,000 to 16,000. And then in addition to that, we do have some application-based scholarships that you can look into. And if you have any questions about those or want any additional information, just let me know. I'm super happy to help with all of that. I like to go over the tuition briefly. We are public university, so the out-of-state tuition is listed here. Um, scholarships, financial aid, and all of the like will help make this cost very different. We individualize this process based on your family, so when the time comes, please, please work with me with all of the cost concerns that come along. I like to talk a little bit about campus life at Michigan Tech. We are division one for hockey and division two for everything else. We have a Nordic ski team. And um, I don't know if you're catching the theme here as you see the snowboarder <laughs> doing the backflip, but we are a snowy college in the UP of Michigan. So I know obviously Michigan Tech, but if you didn't know, we're not in the mitten, we're in the other mitten. So right near Lake Superior, one of the three snowiest colleges in the country. We actually have our own ski hill. You can take snowboarding as a gym class or ski anytime you like. We um, are definitely rural. As you drive to campus, it's about a six and a half, seven hour drive, depending on where you're coming from in the Chicagoland area. And you might see moose on your drive. I've seen bear. I mean, this is rural, deep, dense North woods. So if you like the outdoors, you like hiking, biking, skiing, fishing, canoeing, kayaking, waterfall chasing, all the adventure land stuff. We are located in one of the top 10 adventure lands in the United States. Our experience tech fee gives students the opportunity to have access to our ski hill, all of our sporting events, all the entertainment we bring to campus, um, intramural activities, really anything you may wanna do as a student. 
um, you can do through this. And it's, it's a lot of fun that way. Students are never bored. Our average student comes to us from eight to 10 hours away. So it's a very active campus community. Our students really don't go home for the weekends. You can walk to downtown, um, grab a cup of coffee at our local coffee shop, go to the ambassador for pizza. There's a lot of really lovely campus traditions that you'll feel right at home with when you join uh, Michigan Tech's community and become a Husky. And this is just some of them. We do have over 230 different clubs and organizations on campus, including the Greek system to religious organizations to uh, additional research opportunities and so much more. And that really depends on the year, but the average student does get involved in at least two to three different clubs or organizations, giving them further uh, chance to connect. So um, with all that being said, this is my contact information. We are hosting on-campus tours and would love to have you up. And I'll drop the link in the chat if you want to check out some of those and some of our virtual opportunities as well. Thanks again. Have a great night. Thanks, Tara. Appreciate that. So before we wrap up this evening, uh, individual attendees, I wanted to invite all the uh, individual representatives back on camera here. I thought we would go through and, and uh, the question I asked them earlier was to give us a fun or interesting fact about their college or university. So why don't we go in order of presentation and we'll let uh, K-State go first. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so something unique from Kansas State University is our number one pregame tradition. So ESPN named it the number one pregame tradition in the Big 12 for college football and it's called the Wabash. So we, it's basically like our second fight song. And if you've ever been at a football game, it just looks like a sea of purple. It's amazing. But one interesting fact about the Wabash Cannonball, it was, there was a fire back in the day and it was the only surviving piece of music. Um, so that's also how it became our fight song. But if you wanna Google it, YouTube it, just go to K-State um, Wabash Cannonball and you can see um, our fans performing it. Very fun. Mizzou, what do you have for us tonight? All right. Well, according to Jeopardy and Trivial Pursuit, Mizzou is the birthplace of homecoming. So that's going to be my fun fact for tonight. It is over a month long celebration uh, with not only lots of school spirit, step shows, skit competitions, but also community service. We are home to one of the country's largest blood drives associated with our homecoming, canned food drives, service days, um, but obviously tons and tons of school spirit culminating in that parade and that game at homecoming weekend. Very fun. Uh, NC uh, a and State, what do you got for us? Yes, I would definitely include that we have a 500 acre research farm. Um, so if you're looking to get your hands dirty with crops or work with chicken, turkeys, our swine unit and our cattle, you definitely can think about a and And um, we are going to introduce our own ice cream soon um, from our farm. So definitely a fun fact about Aggieland. I do love ice cream. I have to visit. Um, <laughs> Cincinnati, what do you have for us, Jen? So fun fact for us. So um, I mentioned we're division one for athletics and that um, Cincinnati has professional sports. FC Cincinnati, um, which is professional soccer, actually has their home field in our football stadium on our campus. So that's kind of cool and pretty fun. And um, I know coming from the Chicago area, baseball is a really big thing. We actually get a lot more people at the soccer games than what they get at baseball in Cincinnati. So fun fact. Well, it is a fun fact. So uh, Nebraska Lincoln. Adam. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so Nebraska actually has the nation's longest sellout streak. 90,000 fans we welcome on Saturdays in the fall, uh, dating back to 1962. We also have the most academic All-Americans beating Notre Dame. Uh, uh, so I know a lot of our Chicagoland students are probably Irish, have some Irish roots. Um, but then, uh, you know, we've got some fellow Husker fans and Nebraska natives, Adam Devine uh, from Pitch Perfect. Uh, and then Gabrielle Union also grew up in Omaha. So Dwayne Wade's been at a few of our uh, football games from time to time. So just a lot of good Husker spirit and, uh, you know, storied Husker football traditions in Nebraska. Very fun. Very fun. Tara, wrap us up with uh, Michigan Tech. So my fun fact to share is the campus tradition. Uh, each year our students work tire tirelessly from the time they come back from winter break until the middle of February to build these giant three-story snow sculptures. And it's one of the largest events in the area for this type of snow sculpture winter celebration. So people come from all over the country and it's just a lot of fun. They shut down classes, have a big 
dance party in the quad and uh, there's human ice bowling where you're the bowling ball and they just have it's a really cool uh, campus tradition that's been going on for a long time. Very fun. Well, everyone, thanks so much for joining us this evening. On behalf of StriveScan, I uh, certainly want to thank uh, Loyola Academy for hosting us. Thank you to the institutions for joining us. And uh, everybody have a safe night and a great rest of the year. Have a good night. Bye-bye.